I agree. I agree. And my, my journey in London started on Chalk Hill Estate. That was the first estate I moved to, and that's where I started doing all my badness. And it's just got worse and worse over the years. It's had a couple of reductions, a couple of calming, cooling periods, and then it just sort of, every so often, it just reignites, reignites. Same thing with Church Road and Stonebridge. You know, so it's, it's something in society that can be dealt with with the right strategies, you know. So that's why I'm trying to create all the right strategies so everybody can work as a unilateral, exponential vehicle so everybody benefits. And that's what we've got to understand. We've got to work together towards a common goal. And once we can get the wheels in motion, the snowboard effect within five years is going to be phenomenal. Because everybody coming in will be getting spat out with financial revenue streams of secure, sustainable incomes. And once people can say, right, well, you know what? I'm going to get £1,500 a month every month for this fella. I'm going to get to, and then he's going to grow to 2000 And do you know what? I'm going to earn this. And you know what? I'm going to earn that. And then I can get a mortgage. And then I can do this. And like when they see that and they can touch that, then they believe it. So that's what it is. See it, believe it, achieve it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to see it, believe it, and they'll have to achieve it. So I'm going to bring them onto the platform where they can see it, achieve it. No, see it, believe it. Because you can see it and you can touch it. So here it is. There you go. And let's achieve the, the exit. So the execution, the execution is where they benefit financially. I was, I was getting the belt, there weren't no frightening. The, what had happened is um, it would be determined whether I got the belt or the buckle. So if, it, if I wasn't, if I never called him a cunt or a mug, I mean a woman beater and things like that, then I'd get the belt. The minute I started coating him, I'd get a bit of the buckle. So it just varied the mindset he was in at the moment that I abused him. Because I was just, because I believed everything my mum said about him. I was constantly abusing him whenever he tried to enforce his authority. And because we were skint, I blamed him for everything. Well, I'm five foot eight on my right foot and six foot one on my left foot. And that's because of the shooting, so. It's the position of my hip that makes my leg smaller. When I got shot, my hip went up like that, which made a limp. If I let this leg go and all the muscle go, then the leg bends because of the plate. So when I stand on the plate, it's bent. And when I stand on this leg, I'm straight. It's a small price to pay for the life I've led. So I hope you're fit, son. I'll PT with anybody. If you prepare for travel, I'll put you through your paces. But uh, yeah, if you want to test your fitness, get on a row machine, concept rower, um, level 10, and try to row, row 300 metres in less than one minute. When you get there, contact me, and then we'll go and have a, a cardio session. Might be. I can't say no, because I don't know. Um... I've got an Andrew brother in Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? So if that's Andy, then yeah, you know. But all my brothers and sisters, the majority of them are in Liverpool. I've got three brothers and sisters from my mum, but my dad's got loads of brothers and sisters in Liverpool. One of them passed away his anniversary the other day, Michael, you know. But yeah, I don't know how many kids my dad's got, you know, and I can't ring him up now and ask him because he's dead. So if anyone has any queries, they have any um, sort of suspicions, then just communicate. Email me, marvin at themarvinherbert.com. Email me, and if we're related, we're related. I'd love to find out how big my family is. We go to Canada, America, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, England, Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds and Scotland, I believe and anywhere else that I don't know about. We've got one in America and one older brother in Barbados, I believe. So if there's any more, just let me know because I'm looking to re-engage with my family because I haven't met them all. It was, it was secondary school and it was basically getting taken seriously and it was, I mimicked, I mimicked, older villains, do you know what I mean? So, 
all I wanted to do was be like these older villains. I just mimicked all the older villains from my area, or the naughty boys off the telly. You know what I mean? So by 13, 14, 15, I was travelling around England with a football lot, with a graffiti lot, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's just better being a, a Londoner, wasn't it? When you were a kid in London, so I had to learn the language and the accent quick, but it worked well in my favour because apparently I turned out to be scary. So when I started screaming at people, obviously right now I'm not screaming, but I used to really have a, an aggressive looking face, I was told. Yep, he was, yeah. Yeah, but me and Andy have been connected parallel, indirectly for 20 odd years. Nearly 30 years now. It's crazy. But yeah, now we're working together. Andrew's turned his life around and uh, becoming a phenomenal individual, very much like myself, and just very selfless and giving back and, you know, just making a difference like our elders should have done with us. You know, so actually the pennies dropped for quite a few people. I'm just blessed to actually fell into a strategic alignment with the right people, you know. Oh yeah, good luck to Andrew, we're working together and I'm wishing well on everything he's doing, that we're doing and everything we create to build to move forward. Right, I, look, I understand what people read and what people say about what they read in the media, but if you believed everything they said about me in the media, I wouldn't be a very nice person. Uh, I've done some terrible things, you know, so Daniel's a person that I met in the deepest, darkest hole of my life. He never once done anything that showed me um, that he wanted to use me in any way to profit or benefit. Um, he showed me how to conduct myself as a human being and how to communicate as a human being and how to be selfless. That's what he taught me, you know, so for that, I'll give him credit. Now, everybody's got demons, everybody's got ghosts and everybody's got habits. People have got skills, people have got professions people have got skills so whatever it is he does I know it's doing for the right reason going in the right direction however that is painted is only determined by the media and the people that have it in for him because if I'm correct he hasn't even got a conviction do you understand so everything that's said about him is said from a perspective and a platform that has no basis of fact it's George's opinion, like the Irish media have got carte blanche to say what they want about anybody without any retribution. They even said, I'm a debt collector for him now. They put it up on their thing that like, I'm a debt collector for the, the Mafia. They said that I was a debt collector for them last year. When I went down the street, they posted stuff up. People that are connected to the media say, I'm a hitman and I'm connected to this, but it's not true. Do you understand? Like, I've done some bad things. I got punished, I got investigated, I got released. Do you understand? Like, I'm making a difference now. I don't understand why people have to keep holding on to stuff. I've lost people, I've lost friends, I've lost family. Do you know I mean, I've, I was a crackhead, I was a heaven addict. What, am I gonna blame the drug importers or the drug dealers or the people on the street for that? I can't blame people. So, although everybody likes to point the finger at the kid hands, everybody involved in what they're allegedly involved in are not angels themselves. They're not law-abiding citizens going to work every day, you know? Look into the history of the people that have had conflict with them. You know, like, I'm not here as a judge or jury. I'm not here to cast an opinion, but why is it always about the kin hands? All the people that they've had problems with over the space of time that I've known them are all criminals. They're all connected to major criminals, but yet you hear nothing about them. The people that tried to shoot him dead at the weigh-in in Dublin, I was there. They was Irish people dressed up. Do you know what I mean? When we're surrounded by police officers, right? That are standing by. You know what the police officer said to me? I said, why, the, why are you not doing nothing? He said, what are we getting involved for? Let them kill each other. I was like, wow, that don't happen in London, you know? And that's what the policeman said to me. And I just thought, this is deep. So there's nothing in the media about the people that have tried to assassinate him. Do you understand? There's nothing in the media that people have tried to assassinate him outside his house. 
Do you understand? There ain't things in the, in the media when people try to shoot him on other occasions and people try to set them up. Like, you know, you don't hear what happens to them. Like, and I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to say he's my friend. We've had no business dealings. He's my friend. I know his family. I know his sons. I know his daughters. I know his missus. I know his cousins. I know his dad. I know his mum. I know his grandma. You know, because we grew up in an environment that was family orientated in Spain. Um, my impression was we was all just successful businessmen and I had a bit of a shady past. But because it was kind of weird because I got treated like I was a hot subject. So I never ever see them as being as big as they were in the media in Ireland. I never see that, do you know what I'm saying? I just see a load of lovely fellas that train hard, that work hard, that get up to whatever they get up to in their own time. I'm not interested, I don't ask questions. I'm from a world that don't ask questions, you know? So I got involved with a legitimate business enterprise. I asked Daniel if he wanted to invest after I got shot and that's how I got to know them. So I was trying to raise some capital to do, uh, I think it was a something to do with trees in um, Africa, um, timber. And I asked him if he wanted to get involved. Um, if we confront it, we was X amount of this, X amount, it was about half a million pounds, and then the people in Africa pulled our pants down. You know, but because it was a le legitimate coup, we sort of, well, my respect for him after that grew massively because I thought, wow, what do you mean? Like, I don't have to pay you back, it's business. Like, things happened that made me realise, wow, this geezer's is different, you know? And then I sort of, Went through a period of my life where I didn't know what to do with myself. And then I started questioning where I'm going, where I'm going to be. And then looking at people around me in the environment that was the top of the tree and really asked myself if that's where I want to be, you know. And I really come to the conclusion that I didn't. So I made a choice after I was arrested. And maybe it was a godsend that I got arrested just to help me exit the world I was living in. Because I don't know how to how it went down when I turned up one day and just said to everybody that I was doing business with, right, do you know what, I'm out of here, I'll see you tomorrow, I'm finished, see you later, and never speak to me again. I don't know, it's not normal, so me getting arrested was the energy's way or the universe's way of taking me away from that life because then all my powers that I grew up with, all the powers that I knew, when they actually asked me honestly what I wanted to do after I come out of that case, I was like, do you know what, I'm going to go straight because my kids, man, like I've bent over backwards to get my kids or keep my kids out of trouble. Now, this is the crucial point of their life. My son's nearly 30. My daughter's tw just turned 21. My other son's 23. So they're at vulnerable stages of their life and they're going into adulthood where they're going to be 100% responsible for themselves. And I need them to be spiritually, financially, and physically prepared for the next leg of their journey. And I only believe myself that I need to be here for them. All of them, you know, so that drive I have for my kids, I'm not going back to prison. I'm not jeopardising my freedom because I can't be here for my kids if I do. And that's the power that I have now. Prior to that, the power was my the road was more important than the kids and the family because without the road, I couldn't have the kids and the family. So that was the deluded insanity mindset I had back then, you know. Yes, you're correct, that is me. Peter's a good friend of mine. We go back, what is it now, 10 years, 12 years? Yeah, 10, 13, 14 years, wow. See how fast time goes. Yeah, Huey was 17, 18, if not 16, 17, you know? Like, and he was talking about going professional. I remember him talking about being a heavyweight and I was like, because he was skinny when I used to spar with him, but when he, like, that's when he was powerful and he was skillful. So we had a couple of sparring sessions and I sort of what, held back on him a little bit. And Peter said, no, you can't. I was like, Peter is your son. He said, Marv, no disrespect, mate. Yeah. He said, but if he can't do you, what chances have you got of being world champion? Stick it on him, son. Stick it on him. So I had to basically fulfill his father's wish and I was like, you all right with this, you? He was like, yeah, come on, I, want to be. I said, do you want to be world champion? He said, yeah, so 
it went hard and I, 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 I hit him, you know, and we had it. And it weren't just once, it was a few, a few, I think it was at least six up to eight months we was doing this. Like, and then we went to the gym, back was to the house, into the gym, doing all different things. Then he went around France and then he went to his CYPs in Russia. <laughs> and then he come back um, world champion, yeah. And that was it then, he went up to the heavyweights and he was just sick. And it was nice to see the transformation. Yeah, really nice. Yeah.